We are starting a new side project today to keep busy until the drywall is done and ready for us to get back in the duplex. So that's what we do, these little side jobs, keep busy, make a few bucks. So we're at a different house today, tearing some stuff apart. This house is kind of special in a way. Let's get started. Well, something interesting about this house is that we built it. Yep. Yeah, 15 years ago. This house is 15 years old. The deck is definitely showing signs of its age. And you know, the saddest part about this is that we don't have anybody to blame for anything <laughs> that we find wrong with this thing, right? Yeah. Except for us. <laughs> you know, it's just really the weather taking its toll on that treated oh, decking that just didn't hold up. Yeah. And Arlo's back. Good to see you, Arlo. What's that? You're back. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, you know what? That might have some really big screws in it. Try try to go this way with it. Yeah. Having a little trouble getting that post loose? Yeah, well, I'm afraid to move up here. <laughs> I'm just I know, the whole right thing is shaking. Deck. Well, what I was gonna say is that this post is just screwed down like a toe screw. And you can see there's like one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. There might be eight eight screws holding this down. I looked under there and they're like timber lock screws, which are giant screws. So right. it's not lapped into the framing at all, um, but it's actually held up pretty good and it's hard to remove. So that's a good thing. That's good to know. Locked? It's got a latch. I got you. It's, uh, it's locked and tight. Um, well, I mean, Okay, well, that's one way to do it. There you go. All right, thanks, man. Well, that's stronger than I thought. I know, me too. <laughs> I thought my hand was going to rip right through it. All right, come on in. Where's John at? Hey, hey, look at this. This is not bad. Perfectly preserved. Man. I kind of feel bad actually tearing this up because it, it actually is in pretty good shape, but the deck's got to run through and through, so. Mm. Goodbye, decking. You can see we're tearing these handrails out really fast just by cutting them in half and kind of hinging them out like a gate and it breaks the screws off or whatever. And this is kind of what we end up with, which is fine because these are all getting tossed. But this right here is a structural post, six by six in the corners, so we can't just cut it and break it off because then I've got a huge thing I've got to repair on the part of the post that's staying. So we gotta be careful in the areas that are not getting totally trashed. Oh no, the first piece goes in the pool. That's all right. I promised that it would get totally, you know, filled with stuff. I could totally jump off here and hit the pool if there wasn't a railing. I'm going to do a gainer at lunchtime. I'll do a backflip and Jamie will do a gainer. Our existing framing here is 24 inch on center, two by eights. And that passcode back in the day when we did it, it was fine, it was normal. But nowadays, uh, we would do double that. We'd do foot on center if it's two by eights. Also the span on the girder, that's more than we would usually do now. So we're gonna think about reframing this whole thing completely or you know, basically figuring out a way we can reinforce or strengthen what we have here so that we just have to replace the decking. Hey, watch out for that light. Dude, I about <laughs> took that one off the wall with my forehead. <laughs> oh. There's another one I right just, here. I'm just yeah. glad it's not just me that does stuff like <laughs> that because I always run into stuff. Well, now we're gonna owe him new lights. What about that fan, Jamie? Bad guy. I think. Uh, I told her she needs to get a new fan. And uh, I, don't, I don't think this is made to go outside. I don't either. I know, I see. I think it can go. We've got most of the open decking off, and we have a few joists that are shot, like rotten on top, which is not normal around here. It's normal to have rotten decking, obviously, but we've never really seen this. So we're trying to figure it out. 
Well, we have to do some detective work because we're gonna replace the decking and the joists, and we don't want this to happen again in 15 years. Yeah. So I'm looking at like, what could cause it? Is the gutter, has it been filled up and stopped up and maybe it's pouring an additional it amount of water like here? It is exactly where um, that would hit. It does seem like that could be an obvious factor. It is on the south side, so it's getting a lot of weather, just like exposed yeah. rain and sun. Um, you were saying something about like, if a piece of wood is rotted, it can actually transfer its rot to a solid piece below it, right? Yeah, I've so, seen that on uh, like pressure treated posts where the post itself is fine except for the exact spot where a rotted board is attached to it and it's rotted behind that. So that may have been part of the problem is that this decking was rotten and it just sort of rotting into the top of some of these joists. I don't know. I bet it was water. It's always water. I guarantee water was the problem. <laughs> well, anyways, we're gonna have to rip all these out now. Yeah. I'd do a back flip off right here. 100%. You'd hit bottom. No. The way you're going and you come down, your feet hit, and then you kind of like that. I'm a professional, bro. Oh, come on. Get... Oh, God. Oh, man. Triple team. Green wet. Green wet in the wheel. Hey, you can cut that post there, Post Malone. All right, give me a sawzall. Right there. A couple of nails sticking out the bottom here. Yeah. This load bearing post holding the roof up is on top of this decking. So I don't know what we're gonna do, but for now we're just gonna saws all the decking flush and leave it under there. See if that's loose. Oh, battery's dead. Give me that, Jamie. Wow. It's in the pool. <laughs> pool guy, pool boy. Arlo. What's your plan with all this? We're saving that. <laughs> you know, I can only develop my plan so fast. Okay. I, I don't your... have a plan yet. All right. Uh, it's kind of cool though, a little yeah. walkway, a little <laughs> cantilever deck. Uh, First step's a doozy coming out that door. Yeah, I really didn't want to tweak any of the joist hangers here off of the flashing because we're going to reuse the hangers, I think. Okay. If they're in good shape. Um, so I just want to isolate. So we're going to have to pull those nails. I think so. Oh. Cat's paw. It seems as if we've sort of worked ourselves into a corner. Yeah, we might be in a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> Help! Ladder! <laughs> Help! It's all over there. Uh, I'm not walking out that beam to that ladder, I'll tell you that much. You don't have all that stuff? Ooh. I think we'll let uh, Jamie get the rest of this from the bottom. It's getting a little scary. Yo. There's a door right here. I thought we were uh, sort of hedged in and no way down, but actually. <laughs> yep. It's AC too. Leave that open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Oh, it looks nice. One. This video is brought to you by Good Chop, and they deliver high quality US sourced meat and seafood right to your front door. You can choose from 60 plus high quality cuts and you're gonna support local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the US. And Good Chop especially prides itself on sourcing beef that comes with no antibiotics and no added hormones ever. They only source the good stuff and that's why they feel confident enough to give a 100% money back guarantee. Belays. I got an assortment in my last box that included wild caught salmon, free range chicken, pork tenderloin, bacon, and some steaks. And last night I ended up cooking up the New York strips and the filet mignon, which was my favorite and it was absolute perfection. I'm so hungry. Me so hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah. And yes, I'm cooking my steaks on a smoker, like high heat. That's just how I like to do it. They always turn out great and it's not as stressful to me as a propane grill. I would personally recommend Good Chop as a great way to get high quality meat and not have any question about what you're getting. And if you wanna do it, just go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Perkins120 or click the link in the video description and get $120 off across your first four boxes today. That's goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Perkins120. Thank you Good Chop for sponsoring our video. I'm a huge fan. Let's get back to work. We're breaking this deck down little by little right now. 
I'm taking this one foot piece of the joist that's remaining and I'm sawing it off at about two inches away from the house so that I can take the end of my hammer and split it like I'm splitting firewood here into a bunch of little pieces and then I can knock all those out with relative ease. Now I have nails that are still left in the joist hanger I need to remove because we're gonna reuse this joist hanger. And I think I'm gonna go home and get my Dremel. It has a really small cutting disc and I can get in here and just cut these nails off, pull them out, and then we're gonna reuse this. I'll probably have to put some Lexo on these holes where the old nails were. And uh, everything that I'm doing, I'm trying to be so careful not to damage this aluminum flashing. So you're doing that for every joist, huh? Yep. And it makes it, it makes- And both sides of it. Yeah, we gotta save all that. It may seem extreme, but I think it's actually the easiest thing to do. I mean, the easiest method that I can think of. I mean, I already did what? Almost 10 of them. I'm almost done. Keep, just keep going. It's no big deal. Jono's coming along this side doing the same thing. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Ready to jump in that pool. <laughs> I think I dropped a nail in there. I gotta go get it. <laughs> Now, in case anyone's wondering, these joist hangers are attached straight to the house through this aluminum flashing, which is protecting the wood underneath of it. But right behind here is actually the two by 10 floor band of the house. So this is attached directly to solid framing. Back in the day, if you wanted to add an outside band of pressure treated wood, you would have had to through bolt it with a carriage bolt with a nut on the back. And that takes a lot of labor and a lot of time to do. And so we were able to circumvent that step by putting aluminum flashing on and nailing these joists directly to the existing band of the house. I will say we don't use this method anymore because how easy it is to screw on the band with the modern fasteners. Um, and I think that the band looks a little bit better, but my house is actually built exactly like this and it's holding up just fine like this one is. Where have you been, Arlo, for the last couple videos? I've been, uh, I've been like locked at my house, punching out a million pieces of trim and building some cabinets okay. and doing stuff at my house. We should go do another tour of your place. This is the old house, though, the oh, house oh, I live in, not the new house. I thought you finished that 20 years ago. No, no, it's got, it, come on, I'm a carpenter. There's a million things to do in it, right? <laughs> We are on lunch break here, so we're gonna ride by our duplex job and see where they're at, because I don't even know. I haven't been up here in two and a hey, half look at, three look at, weeks. Look at that, it's looking. Man, so, they might be packing up and leaving. Huh, let's go look. Wow. Hello, what's going on? Biscuit time. Have y'all done any work or just eat biscuits? <laughs> Looks good. You guys are almost done. We've decided to remove the front layer of this girder because it never got stained and it's facing south, getting all this weather and sun. And we just think it'd be a good idea with everything else we're doing. So <laughs> how's it going though? It's going good. Just yep. trying not to destroy the posts, you know, that we're going to try to keep using. Yeah. So Ray's prying out a little bit and getting a gap. Then Jason's sawzalling all the nails and then we'll replace that one. Oh, there it goes. Oh, hold on, hold nice. on. Nice. So Ray's got his guns out. Look at this. <laughs> it's pretty cute, Ray. Yeah. So <laughs> why you're going for that look too? <laughs> I said I can't even do it myself. Cute is that you got Jason doing it for you? That's what's pretty cute. <laughs> hey, wait till, hey, wait dude. till my paycheck's twice as big as yours. Oh, this oh week. Wait, yeah, like, uh, let me uh, fix this over here for you, man. <laughs> yeah, my, my shirt kind of needs rolled up too. Yeah, wait, whatever. <laughs> oh, he's the one writing checks. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First look at our decking, and what is it? it's Trex Transcend grooved yeah and this is like solid the other stuff was really hollowed yeah. out which i think will hold moisture against the uh joist yeah. unlike i don't know. the other one i do know that this is more the premium end of the scale is it it is well it's real primo looking how about that mm -hmm. i bet it's primo heavy it's too real yeah. nice clark Good job, guys. <laughs> Jason and I are rocking new safeties that got sent to us from Safe Style. I'll put a link in the description, but they have shaded ones as well, and I really like them. Yeah. Thank you, Safe Style. Safety first. Fashion first, buddy. Uh, yeah, and fashion. That's right. Because if you know, you know. 
you copied my glasses. My I didn't copy nothing, glasses. bro. They just... <laughs> Crystal lenses. <laughs> Jamie's back with a slew of tiny grinding tools. <laughs> He's gonna cut these nails with. What do you got? I got the cheapest Dremel you can buy, model 100 here. It's actually a very useful tool now. It looks like a toy and I get that. It does. But with these cutting discs here, look okay. at that, quick change. You can actually do some serious cutting. So okay. I need to get into a tight spot in the middle of the hanger to cut these nails. And to me, this is uh, the best thing I can come up with. I'm excited Wait, to see this not work. I, uh, <laughs> hey, now Arlo, he's, he's a oh, Dremel yeah, guy. Yeah, no, I use these all the time. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, then yeah, there might do. be something I, to it. Let me try something. Hey. I, I've actually got a diamond blade like that. Yeah. And uh, a couple of saw, like, saw blades. And, you know, like, I think I have one that is like a hacksaw type teeth. Mm, Whoa, that's actually... safe. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. Oh, let's see. Uh, spin. There it is, and a uh, brand new one here. Uh, let's see, get on there. Oh. <laughs> Any day now. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, he's been drinking too much beer. Oh, man. E easy change, huh? Here. Yeah, there's no, just no, so, they're so fast and easy to put on. It's right, unbelievable. Right, you wouldn't believe me oh, if there I go. told you. And it'll Let's snap. Go. It'll, uh, there. All right, now, it. now. Okay, ready? Yep. What are you gonna do with these little stubbies sticking out? Well, I got a nail punch here. It's not the easiest thing, but I can get at an angle and actually just drive them on in about another eighth of an inch. Okay. Yep. We've got all these timber lock screws that need to come out or get cut. Uh, Jono had the great idea to try to chuck these up in a drill, like in the chuck, like that, and see if they'll unscrew. And if it works. And Jason's saying no way, so. Oh, and I put it in first gear. I'm putting it in fifth gear, baby. Uh, first gear. Oh, got it, all right. Look at that. <laughs> no way. Nice. That's better than saws all in for 30 minutes. Uh, that was awesome. We need to see what we're shooting for. 115 and a quarter. Go ahead and swing yours in. It's not in all the way. No. There. Now it is. We're putting up new joists finally here, and I want to ask Jamie: Are they flushing out on top? You know, sitting in these you know, old it's hangers? surprising that they are coming pretty darn close. Oh, really? That's if good. anything, I'm having to space them up in the hanger a touch. Okay. Which only could mean that the original wood that we pulled out was really fat when it was wet and new. Okay. That's the only thing I can come up. I with. was worried that they may not flush on top. It's working out pretty nice. Jono's going to tweak out the bottom of the hangers a little bit to kind of dress it up a little bit. Basically, that means hit it really hard from the bottom and <laughs> smash it up. Yeah. Let's get this wire back well i keep i keep getting see uh see what's gonna happen over there last thing i want to do is mess up their satellite tv jason put a little bit of lexel in there on those holes and by a little bit i mean like jamie said, <laughs> jamie said fill her up bro all right well that's not gonna leak he wants the board to yeah we don't need a hanger at this point <laughs> take the hanger off later Stuck. Oh, we need to do stability. Uh, we did Lexel under that threshold too. Oh, nice. Very good. Oh yeah, I see and that. We have to paint this. Oh yeah. Yep. All things we got to do. Wee 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 wee. Hey Arlo. Look at that. Wow. I can't believe it. We started by putting all the joists back in the original joist hangers that we left. And once that's done, we're going to put a new joist in between each one of these using a level across the top to get the top of each tweener spaced up to be as flush as possible with the top 
of the two beside it. Now, it was a little give and take because everything is not perfect and each board is not exactly the same width. So you just kind of- You can't flush the bottoms you for can't, no reason. Yeah, you can't flush the bottoms because then the, the surface you're gonna apply the decking to will be a little bit up and down humpy. So it's actually quite a bit of a challenge. And then even after we do all that, you got to account for the crown of all these. And I'm sighting down here, seeing some high, some low. And I'm thinking that we should do a row of blocking like we did on the last one. That Richard. might help actually sort of flatten that out a little bit. Why don't you put yours in first? Well, cause you got the big stick. I got to do the same thing over here. All right, board, board me. Right Where's there. my board square? Me, board me. I'm looking my belt. Dude, I'm looking in your all belt. Right. There's our new side versus what it was. Man, that is way better. You out of boards? Uh, I got one there and mm. I got two right here I can pull out as soon as he's got Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we weren't planning on replacing every single one. Yeah, I think I think the idea was doubling, right? Or yeah, going yeah, we didn't order to out. replace, so. Yeah. That's it for day one. I'm actually really happy with the uh, progress we made and I'm happy that we kind of uncovered all the mystery that I think that this part of the deck is gonna reveal. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, yeah. how bad is it gonna be? I think now we're pretty pretty well informed about it. So, hey, it's almost all back ready for decking now and awesome. we should be hitting that before lunchtime tomorrow. And they're gonna be thrilled to death because she can't even believe how much thrilled we got to done. Thrilled to deck? <laughs> yeah. You should have said that. I don't know why I didn't think of that.